The road to a heart healthy life shouldn't be you know, walked alone. You know, you need to have a good physician, a good clinician who you can partner with over a lifetime, someone you trust, someone who understands your needs. But then partnering for some of these lifestyle decisions with friends and family has been shown to increase the likelihood that you'll stick with it. Today, we discuss women's heart health with Dr. Stacy Rosen, Vice President of Women's Health at the Katz Institute for Women's Health and Dr. Jennifer Merez, Senior Vice President for Northwell's Center for Equity Care. I'm David Reich-Hale, and you are listening to 20-Minute Health Talk. Uh, Dr. Merez and Dr. Rosen, thanks for joining me. It's great to be here. Thank you. Good morning. Great to be here. Thanks. And so, you know, heart health research has historically focused on men. Why is that? Why has that been the case, and how is that changing, or is it changing? Yeah, that's a great question. And and it's so much about the way healthcare research, cl- clinical care was focused decades ago. Everything about our healthcare system was a male model. Historically, we thought it was easier to study men and then just assume that women were the same as men except for the parts covered by a bikini. And we've started to call it bikini medicine. We actually thought that heart disease wasn't a woman's condition and we only studied men. So has that led to misdiagnoses? So we are making progress. And because up until 1979, up until the early 2000s, more women had died from heart disease than men. The curves are now reversing. We have seen a a decline, 30% decrease in women dying from cardiovascular disease. However, we have hit a plateau. And And the trend, especially for younger women, and we define younger, less than 55. I think Dr. Rosen and I are a little bit beyond that. Young plus. Young plus, right. We are seeing that we need to amplify our efforts in terms of awareness and sex and gender research. Imagine for the first 25 years of our careers, Jen and I practice cardiology in a world where mortality rates, death rates for women were rising and rising and rising at the same time that morbidity, sickness and death rates for men were dropping. So all of a sudden, what we had historically thought of as a man's disease or something that if we studied men, we could just give women the same preventive strategies, the same testing was clearly wrong. The science had a change, and when it did, catch-up happened, honestly. We studied women. We discovered what things worked for men did not work for women. We discovered that some diseases were completely different, even down to the anatomy. Remember, every cell in your body has an XY or an XX for most of us, and all those cells are different. You know, I think the important thing we learned, definitely, I, and I think we need to highlight this, that from the American Heart Association, uh, you know, their, their focus on Go Red for Women, which there's a huge scientific component, we learned that 80% of heart disease is preventable by controlling risk factors. So awareness is very, very important and, and thrilled that you're doing this show to bring awareness to or millions of women out there. So 80% of heart disease is preventable by simple lifestyle changes. We also learned in terms of the science that heart disease is presents along a spectrum. Men typically will have that sort of buildup of plaque and a focal blockage that leads to heart attacks, which is the most common form of cardiovascular disease, whereas women can have, you know, buildup of plaque in the large arteries, typical for older women. But younger women um, can have diseases of the small vessels, microvascular disease, and dysfunction of the lining of the vessels that manifest at heart, as, you know, heart attacks eventually or chest pain or some of the symptoms. Hence, when we are just looking for focal stenosis, it leads to misdiagnosis. Misdiagnosis, under-recognition of disease, mistreatment or under-treatment. What we know is that women do get chest pain with angina or heart disease pain, chest pain from, from ischemic heart disease, you know, coronary disease, but they will often get other symptoms as well, either with the chest pain or instead of the chest pain. And it can be very subtle, breathlessness, some gentle fatigue in the shoulders or the back. I've had patients who've talked about toothaches, going from dentist to dentist, a little bit of head fog, uh, perspiration that felt clammy or different. So 
So remember, historically, we didn't think women got the disease. They're not presenting in the exact, you know, stereotyped way that we think of. And historically, the medical world didn't think that this was something to evaluate. And on top of that, some of our testing, as Dr. Mirez pointed out, didn't show the standard types of blockages or abnormalities on stress testing. So you put that all together and you think a woman doesn't have heart disease when she really has it in a different way. And we now have diagnostic algorithms that can look for different types of heart disease or the pathophysiology that shows up in women, looking at the small vessels, looking more closely at the lining of the blood vessels to see whether a woman is at risk for heart disease, heart attack, and whether her symptoms correlate so treatment can be started. Let's talk a little bit about stress also, because... Look, who, who runs the household? It could be the man. It could be the woman when it comes to the finances. It can go either way. But when it comes to kids and sort of family structure, I mean, I know in my house, my <laughs> wife is the reason why I know what day I'm supposed to leave to do anything. She who must be obeyed. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and the kids know, and, but we've all heard this, right? Go to mom to know what's actually happening. I'll say yes to anything and then be told, no, what are you talking about? Where's the So what, does that play a role also, right? Just the... the the stress of being the COO of the household. Yeah, we actually call moms or women the chief medical officer of the household. And Kaiser Permanente put out a neat study that showed 80% of a family's healthcare decisions are actually made by the woman of the house. So you imagine um, how challenging that could be. And that was challenging before the COVID pandemic. But so much has been studied about how much harder these last two years have been on women because they're managing the home. So for women, Women, um, managing everyone else's care often historically has led to women not taking care of themselves. So to Jen's point that most of heart disease is preventable, if you're not taking the steps over a lifetime to take care of yourself, to make the right choices in your lifestyle, and to listen to your body if certain symptoms begin, then you've really missed opportunities. And what can you do about the stress? So, so, David, I think important point, we, we now know, and I just want to, before I answer that question, frame this in the fact that we now understand the risk factors, what places women at risk, and you're spot on, you know, and we'll, we could rattle off diabetes, high blood pressure, um, high, um, sedentary lifestyle, elevated cholesterol, all of these factors, but with the science in the past 10 years had shown that stress Chronic stress is indeed a very potent risk factor, more so in women than men. And so stress is all around us, right? So the key thing is learning to mitigate stress. Some studies have shown that mindfulness, meditation, um, deep breathing, listening to music, anything that you can do to sort of decrease your blood pressure because that goes up with stress. Stress is the flight mechanism. Um, decrease your cortisol levels will definitely decrease your risk for heart disease. So stress, important risk factors, exposure to chronic stress. And it's really the body staying in that stress state for long periods of time destroys the lining of the blood vessels, making a woman much more predisposed to having heart disease. But it can be controlled. And, and Stacy and I do the 10% happier challenge an app and 10 minutes, you know, before you get, I do it before I get out of bed every morning. And it really, you know, you listen, it's guided meditation and it resets how I look at the day. Like today's Monday, my worst day of the week, right? I, I well, well, except for this. For well, except for this, right. But I don't like Mondays generally <laughs> because, you know, Sunday, I get Sunday blues. The Sunday scaries. Yes. But I, I realized that Monday morning doing a 10 minute meditation has changed the way I look at it. So no, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and please know this is science. You know, women historically were told that this is in your head, dear. Mm -hmm. Are you stressed? Is your an argument with a child? Whereas the truth is the stress mechanism is a physiologic and structural harm on body's mental behavior, on body's artery linings, on heart rate, on rhythm, etc. So, so the Heart Association, which has such a you know an elevated level of science, actually recommends mindfulness and yoga with the same scientific um, cr credibility that we recommend aspirin for certain people or stress tests for certain people. So this isn't just in your head. It's part of our entire physiology. And, and the point, actually, that Edson just brought up is partner.